One of the biggest slander claims is that the Bible can't be trusted because it was written thousands of years ago and it's been passed down through the ages, just like kids playing the telephone game. Man, if, if that's true, then yeah, we've got a problem. The copying of the Bible is nothing like the telephone game. The first reason is because the quality of the message is drastically different. The writings of the New Testament specifically are about things that actually happened and were witnessed by people. And when things are witnessed by people, you have eyewitness correction that comes into play when things are written wrong. The next reason is because the quality of transmission is a lot better than the telephone game. The Bible was written, not spoken. So there's a lot less chance for miscommunication. That's the reason we still implement the written word today. It just works. Also, the Bible wasn't transmitted the same way the telephone game operates, where one person tells another person tells another person. Instead, you had an original copy, and then 10 copies were made off of that one. And these are called manuscripts. When copies are made from those, it's both compared to the copy of the original and the original. So you have a lot more chance to catch mistakes and errors. We actually have a lot more manuscripts of the Bible than we do of any other historical writing. Typically when you have more manuscripts, you have more of a chance that there's gonna be errors or discrepancies between them. But with the Bible, this just isn't true. It actually has over 99% agreement across manuscripts from different ages, which is absolutely incredible and unprecedented. There's also a difference in the quality of motive between the Bible and something like the telephone game. It was believed by copiers to be the word of God, not a game. And so you get one kid in the telephone game that wants to throw a wrench into the plans and the message is thrown off. But in the Bible, you have people treating the text respectfully. Yes, there are some people who could have bad motive, they could mistranslate or miscopy, but this would stand out against the hundreds and hundreds of other copies that are being made and matched against earlier copies. When scribes and copyists were writing down copies of the Bible, they were really faithful to record not just what they wrote correctly, but also the mistakes that they made. Say you're writing through 1 Samuel and you write a word wrong and you notice it. You would either throw away that copy entirely and start over at the top of the page, or you'd write in the margin, I made a mistake here, it should really be this. We see this all throughout ancient manuscripts and it shows a certain transparency that the telephone game absolutely lacks. In order for the manuscripts to reflect some sort of major errancy or corruption over the years, it would take a conspiracy that involved copiers across religious backgrounds and time periods and locations. They'd all have to agree on one misleading message to change the scripture into. And then later, religious and non-religious archeologists who found manuscripts would have to alter them to agree with the conspiracy or the misleading message and then put them back or rediscover them later. It would also take modern religious and non-religious textual critics who would notice these errancies but cover them up because they're somehow part of this thousands of years old conspiracy. I love it when a plan comes together. In the end, it takes a lot more faith to believe that wide-scale corruption of the biblical text has happened rather than just believe, along with all of the non-biased experts, that the texts we have are right. Now it's true that we don't have any autographs, which are the manuscripts written directly by the hand of the original author. All we've got are copies, but this is true of every single ancient source past a certain time, because paper just doesn't hold up that well over thousands of years. Look, if you're not gonna believe in the authenticity of the Bible, then you can't really believe in the authenticity of any other historical work. Herodotus writing about Alexander the Great, that's out the window. The works of Plato, gone. Homer's Odyssey, no thanks. The Bible is more accurate than all of these manuscripts, and yet still people don't trust it. The question you have to ask yourself is, why? Is it because you don't trust the transmission of the Bible and the preservation of the manuscripts, or is it because you don't like the content written in it? The books of the Bible are some of the most well-preserved works of literature in existence. If we can't trust that we have a historically accurate Bible, then there's little else from history that we can trust. Maybe you don't like what the Bible says, or maybe you don't trust the claims written in it, though there are several reasons you should, but there's absolutely no basis for discrediting the Bible based on the accuracy of the text itself. So Christians, this one is for you. Don't stress. Even outside of God's promise that he'll guide you and teach you all that you need to know, the evidence itself is on your side. 
God is trustworthy and so is his word. Thanks for watching Magnify. If you found our content helpful, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We really appreciate your support.